Discussions a bit global regarding the tournament. After these first two matches, many MLS teams, more MLS teams have qualified than Mexican teams. Do you have any impression now as you analyze both leagues? I don't like to draw Mary. I, I, didn't, I didn't like to draw many parallels when I was in Mexico with the national team. And I'm not going to start now, especially after last night. I think, generally speaking, the matches have been pretty even. Some of them have been decided in uh, penalty shootouts. It's evident that the MLS is growing, but also evident is the power of certain Mexican teams, especially those playing tonight. They have very valuable rosters. Question for Gerardo. Do you agree that we've seen the World Cup Messi for the first time on the pitch against Orlando versus his performance in the first two matches? Now, I don't know if you agree, but I saw that Messi in the World Cup in Barcelona, but I don't remember seeing him play in Paris that way. Does that mean that uh, he feels he belongs here and he's committed here after such a short stay with this team? Well, if we compare it to World Cup matches, it's hard for me to do that. But if we're talking about his reaction in this kind of situation, I think that uh, there's an added emotional burden in World Cup matches that make you act in a certain way. Now, of course, the other day's match was totally different from the previous matches, where there was more friction. I'd also say that it's because there were many Latinos, many South Americans, Argentinians, Brazilians, Uruguayans on the pitch. Of course, there's a certain level of respect toward the best footballer in the world, but in those 90 minutes, at the end of the day, both teams want to win. So, his football performance is the most important thing. But his performance also says, hey, our team is here. Two questions. Echoing the last question. Other than Messi, you also seemed quite worked up in the last match. I don't know how you might uh, view uh, Messi's performance, but I don't remember you being so worked up in the World Cup, but you were here. So tell us a little bit about that. Oh, nothing. Sometimes matches make you act in one way or another. No big deal. There are certain things that I perhaps should have avoided, no doubt. But at one point, the match was very tight, very emotional, well played on both sides. And as you said in the pregame, it was a classic. So what happened, happened. There were certain reactions on and off the pitch. And nothing more than that. That was just anecdotal, but my main question is regarding Farias and Aviles, because players continue to join the team that perhaps aren't as well known here, but what do you expect from them? They may play in different positions, but I'm sure they will, right? Well, Tomas is a guy who can play in the center, line of four, or line of three, He knows how to be a winger as well. He brings certain variables that are valuable for any team. As for Facundo, he could uh, even play as a number nine with certain characteristics of the team. Uh, 
And sometimes you don't uh, get to know guys that are so young. And the under-22 player rules, it's important that those players that we talked about are the three that we have. And that has to do with the good job that the directors are doing in order to comply with the requests of the coaching staff. No. Well, as for Jordi, it's precisely what he's done his entire life. It's just what we call what we ask from DeAndre on the other side to do their defensive job. Anything that's required of any fullback and then be the vari variables in the offensive. And that's why you sometimes see them participate in the final part of the play. But it won't be very different or different at all from what Jordi has done throughout his entire career. And as for Diego, he's very dynamic, hardworking, good technique, hits the ball very well, and he feels comfortable playing on the inside, either left or right. So just where he was playing the other day or on the opposite side, that's where we'll generally use him. Tata, we might say that you have had the privilege of leading so many teams, national teams and even MLS teams. Tell us. What's your view of the Inter-Miami team right now, with the team you currently have, based on your experience, as you look into the future? Can we say that this is a group that's ready to grab the win, God willing? Well, this is a team that's certainly improving. Like I recently said, we're still waiting for certain guys from Argentina to join. We've had very significant additions that have made us better. Added to that, we have members of the U.S. national team, Canada national team, Finland national team. So perhaps what we need now is only time. But this is something that has to be put together as we go through the competition. And given the difficulties we have, considering the breaks that uh, the players need, considering they have matches every three to four days, I'd say we're on a good path. Of course, the quicker we can integrate the other ones, such as Mota uh, Gregory. I didn't mention Stephanie Nelly, Negri, Coco, who are injured players, but can also contribute. One was recently operated on. I think we're on the right path. We have a very competitive team. And in the future, I think that'll be much better. We need that uh, adaptation period for those who come back from injuries and for those who have yet to fully join us. Two things. Have you decided who's going to be the lineup? Will Jordi be starting? And also tell us a little bit about uh, the decision to have Joseph kick instead of uh, kick that penalty instead of Messi. Well, I'm not familiar with what was said. I think it was maybe mentioned after the match. That's something that they'll define. But of course, it based on how the match was going, it was nice of Leo to allow Joseph to do it. Sometimes players realize it. Those of us who've played, we realize the need of a kicker to score, especially because Joseph worked very well 
in the last few matches, and generally speaking, he even participated as he by not participating with the ball and contributed to Messi's goals. So I think it was a nice gesture. I'm happy that he scored, but I would have said the same thing even if he didn't. And as for the other thing, we'll decide that tomorrow, whether or not he's in a condition to start. He hasn't been with us very long, so we'll talk to Jordi to see how he feels. A question for both. Some teams in Mexico have complained a little bit about the format because it favors the MLS teams because they're playing here because of the traveling time zones. What's your opinion? Does it really matter that you all have the advantage of playing here as opposed to playing in Mexico? Well, it's true. A visiting team is always uncomfortable. I think that this league was created and formed and it, it was done with everyone's approval. It's not like uh, one group approved it and then the other one is just tagged on. No, everyone accepted these conditions. So you have to either speak now or forever hold your peace. Of course, we expect the typical difficulties of a match that's unique, such as this one. You can either come out victorious or get eliminated. So it's true. We're being we're going to be a visiting team with a more complete team. And Dallas has players that have great potential from the midfield on. We're going to see where Velasco is going to be playing. He's going to be playing on the inside, like in uh, recent matches, and then three forwards. We're very quick, two on either side, and uh, Ferreira uh, plays very well on the inside. So when it comes to defending, I'm sure we'll have our work cut out for us. No, as far as personal coverage, no. Just the attention that we need to pay to the opposing team in general considering their most significant individual characteristics. Still, I think the team has continued to progress defensively. If you think about what happened in the first half against Cruz Azul and you compare that to the second half in that same match, and then the match versus Atlanta, and then our last match, where perhaps at times we were dominating, other times Orlando was dominating, Still, we haven't allowed significant goal situations, unlike the first half with Cruz Azul. So I think it's a matter of the more time we spend together and work together and do what a team usually needs so that every element of the team solidifies. Now, about Leonardo Campana, at the start of the seed season, he was very promising. And unfortunately, he hasn't uh, received many opportunities. So how do you handle a situation like this? He's a young player. And having Campana on the pitch, does that change your tactics very much? No, it's a matter of choice. It's one of the first things we talked about with Leo. We wanted to find the best, the best version of him. The reasons why he was being considered so greatly in English football, and that's what he's working toward. And we know that in recent matches, he's played very little. 
We know that uh, the coach is currently choosing another center forward in his place. And we know that in the team, you won't usually have two number nines playing together. And likely, when that happens, it's because of a need rather than uh, unity or uniformity in the game. Still, he is playing well, and he's trying to achieve an opportunity the only way that he can, by telling the coach about uh, how what uh, how little he's being used and that he has to play. <laughs> 